sure that the wider, more like more extenuous angle is already supported. It's going to be, we're going to just be better off for it. So I'm just going to kind of score in a general shape. And remember the inside doesn't have to be perfect for this one because chances are nobody is going to see the inside. We're putting flowers in it, right? Like you'd really have to be looking real hard to pa pass a judgment on the inside. I want y'all to really just hone in on that outside visual, visual texture. I'd rather you focus on the fact that it is structurally well built versus, you know, in nice everywhere. So just like with the cup, um, you're gonna slip and score and I'm going to take a little bit of this slip and I'm going to hit the seam. Let's see if I can push this forward enough for y'all to see. Maybe. Yeah, it's tenuous. Okay, I'm going to hit the seams with a little more slip, some of this really thick stuff. Um, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Because <laughs> as I was moving it, it was picking up and it was just not, not working. So just like with the cup, you can use your needle tool instead of a knife here, and I really recommend doing that just because sometimes that knife can really just go a wall on you. And we're just gonna cut out the general sort of shape. And the kicker, I, I see how I'm sort of like cracking it and pulling it away. That is how you know for sure your piece is leather hard. If it cracks and it's sort of dusty, then that is too dry. But if it cracks and it just kind of breaks off nicely like a Kit Kat, that's about perfect. And with these boxes, like I said, that corner those corner pieces are really gonna do their best to not stay together. It's something about just that harsh angle. So you may have to find yourself coming back and readdressing them. So just really just make sure that those, those seams are as flawless and as together as you possibly can make them. Same on the inside. And once you add in that that next like top half, it'll even come together better. I'm just making sure, see if I can use this little bit without having to break into my, my uh, other slab. I've got one more slab. I'm just gonna do myself a favor and cut away as much of this extra here on the table as I possibly can. So that way, whatever I have on the top won't be that hard to get off. And your trimming tool, the one with that big flat edge, this is a great use for that. I just, do I have one? Ooh, this bad boy. This is a really great tool to kind of pair back those extra long edges. 
and it's not quite sealed and it's really important that we don't push too hard um, because this will just crumple in at this point in time. So we are going to make sure that that seam is just as good as we can possibly get it. And this slab is doing its best to fight me on this particular front. I'm gonna get a little water on this. And this is why flipping and scoring is, is you know, key. And a really great way to just compress it without taking away any material is to paddle on the edges. You'll just, for this one, you will you will have to go back and sort of um, touch up when you, where you want more of a, a sharp, sharp angle. All right. We have a box now. It's a little grimy looking. It's not the most beautiful box, but it is a box nonetheless. We love we love successes in any any shape. So we're gonna let that sort of like glue together. We're gonna give it some time to finish up and look kind of dry in those spaces we need it to dry in. And I made a comment, Susanna, on your video when it pops out. I really think it could be very interesting to take it to the next level if you made maybe the handle or something out of like metal or clay, like you just took some wire and sort of wrapped it or got a piece of like string to make it like a more like realistic feeling handle, like take it out of the clay world completely for just that little bit could be a really nice touch. Um, Whew. It is fighting me, I'm gonna be honest with you. It said a box, you think you're gonna have a box? Get out of here. So we're gonna come back to our, what do you call it? Our box here in just a moment. Um, and we're just gonna talk about your accessories. Like you mentioned in your sketches that you wanted to do chopsticks. Which can be really, yeah, really cool. Yeah, chopsticks on top. Yeah, I think that could be really interesting. We got to be very ginger with those because the thinner you go, like I was telling Emerald, the thinner you go, the more likely those are to snap in half. Um, but they could be really, really gorgeous. So when you bring them in, bring them in and make sure like they are, you know, set aside, I think. We got to just make sure y'all's y'all's work, you alls sculpture sort of sets aside. And I really think the best way to do that is to just roll out a coil and take a little water and just, just pull it to about the length you want. You might have to like tear off a little bit and keep rolling it. That chopstick is gonna be, I'm actually thinking the chopstick is gonna be the hardest thing you do. Um, just because they are so thin and they're so likely to break. But I think it could be real a really cool element. I also, I don't know if you've thought about maybe doing like a fortune cookie at all, but I think a fortune cookie could be like a nice little bonus. And they're super easy to make. Um, and you could even put like a little secret note or something inside of it. It'd be very, very cute. Um, so to make a fortune cookie, all you gotta do 
is roll out a slab of clay, pretty thin, um, not super wet clay, just slightly, slightly damped, roll it out super thin and sort of just push on the inside here to give it a sort of rounded shape and just roll it between your fingers because what we're trying to do is make it rounded here and then you're going to fold it into a half moon like a little, I don't know, this looks like an empanada right now, but um, you're going to fold it into a half moon and create a, like a little air pocket. Just pinch the edges. Um, and then you're going to, right here in the center, just take it in ever so slightly. And there you go. And oh, we can't yeah, leave. That looks really cool. Right? Like, is that not like a fun little touch? Yeah, you could just get, like, I, yeah, I didn't <laughs> really think of that, but that's really cool. Okay. I think I'm and they're so that. easy. Yeah. Like that took absolutely yeah. like no effort. And you could just cut like a little, like a little piece off right here. And if you make this, you're going to need to make sure you cut like at least a hole into it. Cause if you don't, you've made a, a bomb, <laughs> but um, you can cut a little slab out right here in the corner, just widen it out and like, I don't know, write a little secret secret message and just tuck it right in there and just have like a couple of those set aside. I think I made a, I made a whole bunch of them just trying to figure out, you know, how they work. And you know, you got we've got your whole little like fortune cookie pile and they take absolutely no time and they're super easy to do. So we've got a fortune cookie. Um, and yeah, I think that's a really cute element. So is there anything design-wise that you want to specifically add to your box that you think will take it to the next level or needs to be like part of the design? Because right now we just have like a, it's a pretty plain box. It's got clay all over it, but you know, it's just a, just a box. I was thinking, you know how on those, and you have this in your drawing as well, on most takeout boxes, they have like a little flap here on both sides where the, like the seam folds over. Um, that doesn't have to be like a big part of your, like a structural part that can just be entirely aesthetic. And I actually recommend that because if you just cut out like a little triangle like this to about the width of your edge here, make sure you cut out two, one for each side. Make sure your knife is the right direction. Otherwise you're just cutting your hand. Make sure they're about the same size. And we're just gonna Score here, score over there, same on this one. I'm going to add a little water to my slip real fast. Make sure that looks good. Go ahead and attach it there. Do the other side. Make sure those are nice and on there. And then I really think that seam on the top where the box folds over just needs to be a straight across slab a little bit like this. Um, but we want it to fade into the base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and attach it and then we're gonna carve back into it so that it sort of meets the end of our box right here.